Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm about to do the Skyrim book tag. But before I get started, I wanted to thank everyone who has watched the inaugural BookTube Prize Talks. I was so glad to gab with three of my fellow nonfiction judges for the Octafinals. And thank you again to Charlie for organizing this. I'll link to the video down below and apologize in advance for people who haven't watched it yet because... <laughs> Well, several of my own family members who watched, down to my six-year-old niece, basically came away with saying, what the hell was up with your lighting? I chose to film here because I usually film here uh, for my booktube videos. But with the webcam and the time of day, boy, <laughs> it was like the light of God was streaming out from my window. <laughs> Anywho, I've now scouted out a better place in my condo to uh, record live streams from, which I hope I can use again in the future, maybe for the quarterfinals. Uh, I would love to come back for that. Anywho, back to the point of this video. I was tagged a few weeks ago by Jay Shea to do this video game related tag, which was uh, started by Dini, and I will link to their two videos down below. Now on to the questions. Question number one. The Dragonborn can absorb souls, breathe fire, soothe wild beasts, and so much more. What character do you think would be capable of anything? I decided to go with Leela from the Neapolitan novels by Elena Ferrante. I am, after all, watching My Brilliant Friend Season 2 on TV right now. <laughs> Leela is also a prodigy who goes above and beyond the expectations that are placed on her by her 1950s uh, Neapolitan neighborhood. She's academically brilliant, but also adept at understanding the more complicated truths behind popular intellectual talking points. She's also a doer who puts herself out there to learn all different sorts of skills. She learns writing when she wants to write a novel with her best friend Lenu. She designs shoes for her family, and she'll even get into computers in some of the later books. Spoiler, spoilers. Question two. Lydia is sworn to carry your burdens. Who is the most annoying side character? Uh, I'm gonna get a little dicey here and return to the booktube prize. About one of the books I read a couple of months ago for the Octafinals. I'm trying to give some props to nonfiction and tags where, you know, they don't usually appear. Anywho, this character slash real life person is Kevin Feldis, who worked for the U.S. Attorney's Office in American Predator by Maureen Callahan. He kind of strong arms his way into the Israel Keys interrogation. To me, it felt like he was trying to make a name for himself while botching up a case involving a serial killer. But I guess I'll stop now, because as mentioned, he is a real person. Uh, question three. Did someone steal your sweet roll? What is a delectable food from a book that you'd like to eat? I'm not the type of person who usually zeroes in on uh, foodie talk during books. But I do remember one novel where I definitely felt the reference for food. It's uh, Crescent by Diana Abu Jaber about a uh, Iraqi American chef. I remember I read this book for one of my college literature classes and I was so excited to finally be reading contemporary fiction again. <laughs> Question four, took an arrow to the knee. What character do you think would be the most likely to get randomly injured? Uh, I guess I'll dip into YA fantasy for this, because that seems to uh, involve characters who are both either warriors or clumsy or both. <laughs> the last clumsy fighter I read about was Jude Duarte from Holly Black's Folk in the, of the Air series. Question five is Aedra versus Daedra. What is the most interesting force of good or evil or otherworldly source of power that you found in a book? I feel like this is a glib answer, but it's honest. To me, it's the power of language, the power of character, the power of story. How you can pick up a book and gain understanding of life that is completely outside of yourself. I get it through other media as well, but nothing as powerful and as all-encompassing as reading a good story. Question number six is, Tamriel is full of double-crossers. Who is your favorite deceitful or suspicious character? And this feels like a cheat too, but I'm going to go with Ren from Planetfall by Emma Newman. 
Ren is our main character, so we're supposed to sympathize with her in a way. But she's also unreliable, and throughout the course of the story, we see how deep the rabbit hole goes. Question seven is, The Lusty Argonian Maid is the hottest book ever written. What is your favorite romance in a book? At the risk of getting some flack, which I'm sure will be coming to me a lot in the next month with the prequel coming out, <laughs> it's Katniss and Peeta from the Hunger Games series. Maybe hot isn't the best word for them, but it is definitely my favorite romance. Which is tricky to say because a lot of the presentation of the romance, especially in the beginning, is a lie. It's propaganda meant to create a celebrity culture in the face of a dystopian world. The real hot part might be when you're thrust into life or death situations together, the emotions tend to ratchet up. <laughs> But what I came away with, especially after the Mockingjay epilogue, is that Katniss and Peeta taught each other how to live fulfilling lives. And that one of, if not the most important thing in this world, is feeling connected to other people. Seems especially prescient right now. <laughs> Question eight is, Stealth Archer is the obvious and most practical character build. What type of character do you think is most useful? And give an example. The most useful? I don't know, I don't really approach characters in this way. Unless I should substitute with Katniss and Peeta from the question before? And maybe for hot romance I should put in Jude and her fairy husband Cardin? <laughs> Cause damn, talk about some smoldering buildup. Question number nine. There's more to the world than just humans. Elves, Khajiit, Argonians, and more. What is your favorite fantasy or sci-fi race? Uh, I'm having difficulty with this question as well, even though I do read a fair amount of science fiction and fantasy. But in general, I approach those stories and every story as being most interested in humans and humanity. And it seems to me that most other creatures are seen in the stories as other. So I think I'm going to answer this, I guess, with Tolkien-esque elves or being ethereal. Uh, this is reminding me of another video that I'll try to find and link down below that I recently watched uh, all about uh, different types of magical world building. Uh, there's kind of the two types, roughly speaking, generally speaking. One is where all of the rules are explained and another is where magic is more mysterious. And I definitely fall more on the mysterious side of magic. I, I don't want everything explained. I don't want it to feel too rational and too much like science. In fact, I'm writing my own fantasy novel right now, and uh, the most otherworldly being would be um, gods. And I'm definitely um, looking into that as uh, presenting magic as something that uh, is unknowable to a certain degree and as a way for us to combat the fact that some parts of life are beyond our control uh, to an extent. Uh, but anyway, I guess that's kind of how I see Tolkien elves, though. Though perhaps someone with a deeper understanding of Tolkien might contest me on that. And finally, number 10. Glitches. Dragons freaking out in midair. Giants sending you sky high. What is a surprisingly funny or unexpected thing you found in a book? So I thought I'd wrap up with the last book I just finished, which is uh, Tar Baby by Toni Morrison. <laughs> Trying to keep things diverse around here. <laughs> this is a book that's very much about the perception and the presentation of race. But it's also kind of insular with a small cast of characters specifically revolving around two couples, the dramatic uh, white couple and their overworked uh, domestic uh, couple. And uh, all four of those characters and more have shared some chuckle-worthy dialogue. In terms of tagging people, uh, I understand and respect that uh, some people are backing off of tags anyway because of coronavirus and just not wanting to put in all the mental energy into this, uh, which I totally respect. Uh, it's taken me a while to get to this one after all. So I think I'll be general and loop back to other themes of this video, uh, because thanks to the BookTube Prize, uh, the judging and the chats, uh, more people are coming to my channel, so hello! Hello BookTube Prize people! If you're watching this video and you want to do a tag, you're tagged! <laughs>
So that about covers it for me now. I'll leave links uh, to my reviews for the lesser known books I talked about down below. I'll be back soon with my uh, last Friday Reads video of April, and I have a couple of other videos I want to get to, to the end, uh, at the end of the month. <laughs> uh, this is all very freaky. I mean, every month, you know, we tend to say the end of the month is some co so come so soon, <laughs> but this is so different. I mean, I have spent this entire month at home, <laughs> and so it really feels like... Uh, Speaking of uh, otherworldly, maybe video game-like experience, that this is not reality. <laughs> I hope you're making do, uh, doing the best you can uh, emotionally throughout this uh, time, not being too hard on yourself, and I hope you're staying safe and healthy as well. And I look forward uh, to seeing you again on my booktube subscription. It's my uh, favorite new morning routine now, is uh, getting out my iPad and uh, going through the feed. So. Thanks so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you next time.